is faithful. He is faithful. He's done it before. He'll do it again. He is faithful. He is faithful. He's done it before. He'll do it again. He is faithful. He is faithful. He's done it before. He'll do it again. He is faithful. He is faithful. Welcome here. I'm thrilled that you decided to join us today. Our first story is the story of Job. Now, boys and girls, Job was a man who was blameless and upright. He followed God and he stayed away from evil. So God really blessed him. He had a lovely wife. He had 10 children, boys and girls. The Bible tells us he had seven boys and three girls. I don't know if any of you have 10 brothers and sisters, but I think that would be awesome. You'd have to do a lot of sharing. It would be very cool. So this was Job's family, and it was very important to him that they followed God, and God blessed him for that. Not only did God bless him with an amazing family, he gave him land, he gave him animals, and lots of servants. The Bible tells us he had 7,000 sheep. Now, I know some of our Bethel kids have sheep, so they have a little idea what that might have been like. He gave him 3,000 camels and 500 oxen, which would have been used to plow the fields, as well as 500 donkeys. Now what's really cool about the story of Job is how there is a conversation in God's word where Satan and God are talking. And here's what God says. He says, Satan, my servant Job, he is blameless. He is upright. He follows me. He worships me. And you know, Satan said to him, he said, well, of course he does. You gave him a beautiful family. You've given him land. You've given him animals. He's got servants. He's rich. Why wouldn't he follow you? But take that all away. That'll change things. So God said, very well. Do what you want, but spare his life. So boys and girls, this is what happened. One day, a servant came running to Job, to Job and he was panting. He says, Job, Job, you're not going to believe this. The Sabians came. They took, they took your, your oxen. They took your donkeys. I'm the only one who escaped. And they left. Before that servant was even done speaking, another servant came running. Job, Job. I came as fast as I could. You're not going to believe this, but, but there was like a bolt of lightning that came from the sky. It hit your sheep and all of your sheep are dead. Just like that. Before that servant was done speaking, a third servant came. Job, Job, the Chaldeans, they came, they attacked. They took all of your camels. They're gone. Then, boys and girls, the final one came. This was the worst of all. Servant came, Job. Job, you're not going to believe what just happened. All of your kids, they were all at your oldest son's house. They were celebrating. They were having a party. When winds came out in the desert, they took all four corners of the house. They smashed them in, and every one of your kids is dead. Oh, he was devastated. Boys and girls, do you know what he did?
I'm going to read to you from Job chapter 1, verse 20. Listen to this. At this, Job got up, he tore his robe, he shaved his head, then he fell to the ground in worship. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I will depart. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by blaming God for doing wrong. Isn't that incredible, boys and girls? Well, the Bible tells us then after that, another conversation between God and Satan. And God said again, have you seen my servant Job? He's blameless. He's upright. He stays away from evil. And Satan says, well, take away his health. Then he's going to curse you. And God said, very well, you can take away his health, but spare his life. So boys and girls, one day he woke up. And he was sores, boils, the Bible says, from his top of his head to the bottoms of his feet. And he just sat there and he scratched and he itched and he was so uncomfortable. And you know what, boys and girls, his wife said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job said, no, no, he wouldn't do that. Then some of his friends came over. There were three of them who sat with him for quite some time. A fourth one also showed up. And all of them started talking to Job and they said, Job, we know why this has happened to you. It's because you have sinned. You're either too proud or you've done something wrong. God is punishing you. We know why this is all happening. But boys and girls, Job knew that was not the case. He had not sinned. The Bible even says that. Well, his friends left. And Job sat and he thought, oh, if there was just someone who could talk to God for me, if there was just a mediator or a go-between, somebody. He just didn't understand why all this was happening. And one day, in the wind, the Bible says God talked to Job. And he said, Job, where were you when I created the world? Who tells the sun when to come up? Who tells it when to go down? Who tells the angel, uh, the eagle when to fly? Who tells the animals when to have their babies? Who decided how big the oceans would be? And God said, my ways are higher than your ways, Job. And you know what, boys and girls, Job said, oh, yes, of course, I'm so sorry, Father. Yes, your ways are higher than my ways, and I can trust you. Wow. Well, then the Bible says that Job lived for 140 more years. And God blessed him with double all his animals. He had 7,000 sheep. Now he had 14,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camels. Now he had 6,000 camels. He had 500 oxen. Now he had 1,000 oxen. He had 500 donkeys. Now he had 1,000 donkeys. And God gave him 10 more children. Isn't God amazing? He is so trustworthy. Even when we don't understand what's all going on, we can trust him because his ways are higher than our ways. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. You're here. Hey, everyone. I'd like you to meet my assistant, Professor Klausma. I'm so excited to be here. Yep. Wow. Your lab is very cool. But I, I, I'm a little bit nervous, so... I have some candy. You want some candy? Oh, oh, oh Professor Klozma. Um, it's it's okay. It's okay, really. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, uh, yeah, please, oh. please be careful. I'm so very sorry. I, uh, whoa. Uh, no, it's, it's all right, Professor. It's all right. It seems like bad things always happen to me. You know what? It's totally an accident. Hey, did you hear? I just told the kids about Job and all. He had way worse things happen to him. Oh, yes, I sure did. That Job guy had it really rough with all the stuff that he lost. I hope I never have to go through anything like that. But, you know, I do feel really bad for him since it seemed like he did nothing to do to deserve all that. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. And it must have been very, very hard for him. But you know what? There is someone else in the Bible, Professor Klausma, who also had some really, really unfair things happen to him. Who are you talking about? Jesus Christ. Actually, in the next couple of weeks, 
we're going to be looking at Old Testament stories, and you know what? We're going to see how many of them have a connection that point to Jesus Christ. I'm not sure what you're talking about. How does the story of Job point to Jesus? Well, did Job suffer? Oh, yes. He suffered terribly. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus suffer when he was here on the earth? Well, of course. He suffered terribly when he died on the cross. And had Job done something to deserve losing everything and getting so sick? No, I don't think so. If I remember the, sto the story, it says that he followed God and stayed away from evil. Exactly. Now, let's look at Jesus Christ. Has he committed any sin to be treated the way he was on the cross by dying <laughs> no, on the cross? No, 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 no. Of course not. He never sinned. Oh, ah, I get it. Yes, yes, yes. There seems to be some kind of connection in these stories, right? Yes, and it doesn't stop there. Did you also notice how Job really, really wanted someone to talk to God for him, like a mediator? Yeah, yeah, he wanted to hear from God and wish that there would be a go-between for him and God. Wow, Jesus is our go-between, us and God. Jesus taking the punishment, dying on the cross, rising from the grave. He is the reason we can have a relationship with God. And Professor Klausma, one day we get to be in heaven with him. Oh, I sure am thankful that Jesus did all that. It's cool to see how these stories help to point to Jesus. Is, is there anything else I can help you with? You know what? You can help me clean up this mess. That would be great. Okay. But hey. But before we clean this up, let's have a tweet. Want a candy? <laughs> Professor Claus, but no. Um, how about if you put those back in your pocket? We'll save them for another time. Maybe don't bring them up here just now. But boys and girls, I want you to remember and praise and thank God that he died on the cross for us. And remember how Job points to that. Job also suffered, but Jesus suffered just for us. So let's remember that. And hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Bye now. Bye. Bye.